560 Mineral Spring Avenue. And we have the pleasure of interviewing Ricardo Pitts Wiley. Ricardo, what a pleasure to have you and thank you for affording us this interview. Well, thank you very much. I'm happy to be here and, uh, and welcome to Mixed Magic Theater and beautiful Pawtucket. And <laughs> thank you, thank you. Ricardo, tell our viewers a little bit about who is uh, Ricardo Pitts Wiley? Well, I, uh, uh, I've been an actor for really all of my life since I was 15 or 16 years old. And uh, so I'm, I'm going into my fourth decade as a, as a, as a theater artist. I, I'm from Michigan originally, and I, uh, I, I was cast in a play when I was 15. Uh, Romeo and Juliet in high school, wow. and it was uh, I wasn't a particularly motivated high school student, and, uh, and I had been bused to a school, uh, which is another story. But uh, uh, a director of uh, an English department was doing Romeo and Juliet. He asked me to be in and gave me a role, and I walked out on stage the first time, and the whole audience had broken into laughter. I mean, it, it, it was a moment that could have been devastating to me. Right. But I got out on the stage and I said, well, you know, I'm playing the prince, and I am the prince. <laughs> and, and these are all my subjects. <laughs> and, uh, and I'll let them laugh, but in the end, the prince must speak. Oh, and good for you. and I, uh, I remember saying, I had, you know, certain heroes, acting heroes, Brock Peters being one of them, wow. who had that great voice. Yeah. And uh, I said, you know, God, I need a voice. Mm -hmm. And uh, and it was like something said, you know, reach down through the stage with your feet, your toes, reach through the floor and grab the earth. And and when you grab the earth, when you're ready, it will give you power. Wow. And and, and I can remember that feeling. Wow. And 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 when they stopped laughing, I I, I did my first lines on stage, rebellious subjects. Enemies to peace, profaneness of this neighbor staying still. Will I not hear? And, I was, and, I, and when I walked off stage, you were good to go. I was good to go. I said, I know what I'm going to do for the rest of my life. And what I didn't understand, and I understand more profoundly now, is not only did I enjoy the craft of acting, I, I really became cognizant of and invested in trying to spread the, the how important it is for people, especially African American people, to understand the power of language, wow. the power of words, the power of being able to speak yes. and to read and to understand language. And you know, he who controls the language controls the power. So, do you teach? I do teach sometimes when I get it. Uh, when, when I when there opportunities are afforded to me, I try not to think of myself as a classroom teacher. As a, you know, I'm not a licensed teacher in that respect, but I do projects. And when I go into and do a project, I really kind of focus on subjects like literature, language, and power. Okay. Or or the, the new media literacies, where you where you try to get young people to connect the dots of history and pop culture and 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 classic literature in a way that says, you know, we have to bring this story right to your life today. Mm -hmm. But you have to be able to invest in the whole story in order to really understand what's what really what is going on. So when you do a play like a project 
something like the Moby Dick, where people said, you won't get young people to read it. Well, we did, you know, but because, because we didn't, we weren't trying to work toward the test. We were working toward understanding. Melville wrote a novel almost 200 years ago, but you think it doesn't relate to your life today? Oh, yes, it does. Mm -hmm. So, and, and, and so much of the theater that we do at Mixed Magic, Mixed Magic here is about really trying to get people invested in the world that they live in. Uh -huh. and, 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 and That's an interesting concept. So, yeah, so, and, and you know, all good theater is political and topical. Uh -huh. uh, Shakespeare, in his time, would wrote political and topical theater. Okay. Uh, uh, but, uh, but, but also, you have to do it, you have to try to do theater that, 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 that doesn't separate people by class. Yes. Okay. You know, class, class and economics are the, are the great enemies of great theater. Uh, because it says, if you go to this or if you watch this, you are of, you know, you, you are elite. You are, you know, but poor people, you know, aren't encouraged to access the theater. Uh, there's this feeling that if you don't have a certain amount of education level, you couldn't possibly understand theater and certain kinds of theater. It's like, that is just so wrong. Mm -hmm. and, and, and at Mixed Magic, when we do Shakespeare, when we do August Wilson, we approach it the same way to say, the, the key thing is to let the audience and help the audience understand what you're saying, uh, what you're trying to get, what you're trying to project. Wow, wow. wow. So that's kind of my history and, uh, and uh, so when I got to Rhode Island in 1974, I came to work at Trinity Repertory Company. Oh! And, uh, oh! Yeah. That's what brought you to Rhode Island. That's what brought me to Rhode Island. All oh, right. Uh, and, I, and I was there for a number of years, and it was it, it was it was a great education. It was a, it was. You know, I came in at a time when the company was superior, mm -hmm. uh, and I was I, I, I learned at the feet of so many talented people. But there's a certain point in time when, uh, uh, after a couple of years at Trinity, I kept going out on stage and. And there would be no black people in the audience. I mean, where's my mother? Where's my brothers and sisters? Where's my community? Yes. And 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 I realized it wasn't Trinity Rep's job to go out and, 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 and recruit that audience. It was my job. Mm -hmm. And because uh, uh, there was no imperative for them to do it, there was an imperative for me to do it. And 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 you know, sometimes I don't regret it. But the, the, to be a successful actor, for the most part. You have to be single-minded about the craft of acting. Yes. And when you go, when you go looking to serve the community, it's you got you got you got to make some hard decisions sometimes. You know what's more important? You know me getting a role that's good for me, you know, or me trying to serve the community, and particularly a community that doesn't always understand or appreciate what you're doing. Mm -hmm. But, but. But I'm, a, I'm in this business and have been for the last 40 years because, because a community of people supported me. Yes. And, uh, and, 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 I, and I'm, I'm compelled to try to get back. And when I met my wife Bernadette uh, in 1976, um, um, together, you know, for the last 40 years, you know, uh, there's very few things I could have done without her support. Uh, her talent, her energy, her wisdom, and, uh, and, and and her willingness to invest with me. Yes. Uh, uh, so, uh, and, uh, so even when, I, when we had, our sons were born, we, we made a commitment to our sons that if, if, if you do your work, homework, if you do your homework, you do your work in school, when it comes time for you to go to college, it doesn't matter what our circumstances are, we will find a way to give you the quality of the education that you you have earned. Yes. Well, <laughs> I'm proud of them, you know, but, but you know, sometimes it's, you know, you, you, you say, be careful about promises you Yes, make. yes, uh, yes. Because yes, our yes. oldest son uh, went to do. Well, yeah. there's, a <laughs> there's a difference in tuition in 1976. Yeah, that's true. And 20 years later. Oh my God, it was crazy. And uh, 
So we ended up sending his son to Duke and won the Yale. Excellent. And, uh, Excellent. Uh, but they, they, they proud they, parents. Proud parents. They earned it. Our youngest son, who went to Yale, is is a is a, is a teacher at Moses Brown teaches history, but he's also the director of the theater. Ah. And 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 I, I think the the fact that they grew up in the theater helped them get into those schools in ways that are immeasurable. Uh, one, they were not afraid of language. There was, they lived in a world where there was an expectation of language command and understanding and literacy and, 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 and critical thinking because they were constantly being challenged by creative people to say, no, you have to be, you have to be in the world. You, you know, if we, if we talk to you, and we're, we're having a conversation, we're not expecting you to not know what's going on. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, uh, also, there was, th they met celebrities and, and, you know, and people with great talent, and sometimes famous people, mm -hmm. but they weren't overwhelmed by their presence. They right. said, no, you, you, they learned to take those things in stride. Mm -hmm. So when they got to those schools, they weren't overwhelmed by, by any of the things, but they, they they also, they, they knew plays and playwrights and geography and, and history and all of those things. And that's the great part of, of the theater that more of the community needs to invest in. Yes. The theater isn't just about going to a play. The theater is about, is about understanding the world that you live in yes. and being able to, to take some control of what you know and also understand what you don't know. Yes. And uh, uh, and, and and it's it's a it's a it's a it's a bit of a drug in the theater for me in the sense that it it the more I do it and the more I learn from it, mm -hmm. the more the more deeply I become invested in it. Yeah. And 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 modern technology is making it possible to connect so many dots. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a, there's no subject that it, 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 that you can you can start from anywhere. The theater says start from anywhere. Pick a subject, start from anywhere. It'll take you to everything in the universe. Pick a subject and invest in it and 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 and, and, uh, and work on it. So now this is this philosophy is something that um, is applied by. Your work with other actors yes. who work with you in that magic theater. Uh, uh, well, you know, uh, mixed magic, and, and we 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 trained a lot of actors. Okay. When, when we started 14 years ago in 2000, there was well, yes, because I was going to ask you about the history of mixed magic. Well, uh, it started in 2000. We were li living in North Kingstown, and it's the town of North Kingstown, like every town in in Rhode Island for the for the millennium was given $2,000 to do a project. Uh -huh. So the town of North Kingstown approached me and said, we got this $2,000, can you do a project? Yes. So I wrote a play called about the town of North Kingstown over a 40 year period of time and the impact that media had on the town. Uh -huh. And a, a restaurant owner um, bought three TVs in 1960 as a way to attract customers to his restaurant. But really, over the next 40 years, what happened was those TVs brought the world into this little community. Mm -hmm. So you, you do American history and world history. But the cast that we had for that show was made up of community people, mm -hmm. very diverse cast, mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and age, age, uh, you know, uh, uh, there was gender diversity, there was generational diversity, there was racial diversity. But what was fascinating was to you'd be with a 15-year-old actor and a 65-year-old actor, and you're talking about an event that happened in American history. And and the, the fascinating part often was the older person would say, no, "I was there. Let me tell you what this was like." And and sometimes the kids were like, "I mean, it really happened like that." Yes, you can't even imagine. Talking about the Vietnam War, the Kennedy assassination, the Civil Rights Movement the women's movement, all of those things. And, and actually at the end of that end, at the end of that summer, we did a play, it was, the play was called How the World Came to the NK Cafe, North Kingstown Cafe. <laughs> and Bernadette and I said, you know what, if, if we were ever gonna do a theater program again, because we had done it before, 
this is what we, what we want it to look like. Uh, all this diversity and everybody giving, being given an important role. Yes. And uh, so we, we started Mixed Magic Theater and uh, um, you know our first mission model was first think diverse. Diversity is often put on the back burner. You know, it's like it's a, it's a, it's an afterthought. You know, well, maybe we should be diverse. Well, we said no. We're gonna put diversity first. Yes. And uh, and we've since evolved, and and you know, we we you know our mission changes and evolved to creating more literate and arts active communities. Mm -hmm. And and, uh, and 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 now we're we're even more invested not just in, in literacy and. and you know, but also using the theater as a vehicle to to enhance the living uh, uh, of, of, of the people in the community, and also to to uh, uh, tell their stories. Mm -hmm. You know, Jonathan, our, our artistic director, our son, Brendan, and my son. You know, he often says, "Tell the stories of the people." Sitting in the seats, mm -hmm. people in the audience tell their stories. Yep, and and, and we work to try to do that. Oh, that's special. Yeah, that's but, cool. but 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 you know, 14 years ago, we looked around and said, "Where's the African American talent?" Yes, yes, it didn't exist. Yes, so we started early, just trying to recruit people. One of the things is this is this is missing. You know, people love to throw money at youth organizations, you know, and I'm not. I'm not down on that at all. But when, when you're trying to build a theater program, when I would say, I need to recruit middle-aged and older people first, mm -hmm. because the theater is not made up of 16-year-olds. But, it, but the, 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 the governmental agencies and so on, and funding groups, they love to say, you know, why don't you do an after-school program? Or why don't you do a 12 to 15-year-old program? And say, well, I can do that, but those people are going to be no good to this program as a, as a performer for 20 years. And 99% of them are not going to stay. The, the, the theater grows because people see the future. So we had to go and say, hey, you know, now I'd say, I'm more interested in their parents and grandparents than I am in the kids right now. Because the kids will stay if they see the future. But you got a bunch of fifteen-year-olds teaching them a program. They look up and they look around them, and they don't see any images of, them, of themselves beyond the program they're in right now. They don't stay. So we decided to invest in an adult. Okay. By, by. I, I kind of agree. I think that you know the, the youth the deserve some of those seeds being planted because you know let's think back at the kind of Pitts Wiley when. He started out, right. and he had his first play, he was, what, 13 years old, yeah. and uh, uh, walked on that stage, and, and, and look at all the, the wonderful no doubt. things that, that he got out of that experience. But I also was very fortunate in that, that I, because I, 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 I could see Sidney Poitier and, and Cicely Tyson yes, and, yes. and Harry Belafonte and Bill Cosby. There was I, I came in at a time when there was when there was there was a I could see the future. Yes. James Earl Jones and so on. There were there were actors the the black actors that I could uh, that I could Brock Peters I mentioned before. Yes, yes. You know I could I could uh, I could I could reach for but also. Well, I won a scholarship, a dramatic arts scholarship, to Eastern Michigan University. I got one play, and but I, I, you know, I had a teacher who said there are often five scholarships in the state of Michigan for this school. We're going to go win one. He didn't say let's go compete, let's go try, let's go give out our best efforts, mm -hmm. let's go win one. Mm -hmm. And I take that attitude with me to this day. You know, I, I didn't come, I didn't come here to compete. I came to win, yes. and we did. I did. And uh, um, but the the, the, the the that night uh, at Eastern Michigan University after the competition was over, the, the actors, the, the competitors stayed to watch a play, uh -huh. and the play I saw 
was Blues for Mr. Charlie by James Bond. Oh, yes. And I, I'm sitting in an audience and I saw all these black actors on stage. And it took my breath away. Mm -hmm. and, and I knew, had I seen a different kind of play, I might have, my life would might have taken a different turn. Because I would have looked at them and said, well, this will be fun for a little while, but there's no future for me here. And I think young people today need to see the future too. They need training. I'm not saying don't invest in those young people. You should. But you've got to invest in their parents and grandparents and uncles and aunts in the community too. Yes. I, I tell a story uh, uh, often about Deacon Wilson's chair. When I was growing up in a little country town in Michigan, I went to the First Baptist, First Missionary Baptist Church. And, and there were, my father was a deacon and there were deacons in my, in, in my, my, uh, my, uh, my Sunday school teacher was Deacon Wilson. And, uh, uh, and he, he gave the altar prayer often. On youth day at the church, when the youth take over the service, I sat in Deacon Wilson's chair because was, it was a chair I was due to inherit. Mm -hmm. So when it came to the altar prayer, I prayed Deacon Wilson's prayer, you know. <laughs> and, and people were like, that, that's Deacon, that's you, you know. <laughs> that's you. And, 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 you know, because there was, there was an expectation that chair was going to pass to me. Well, I did, it didn't, I, in some ways, it, it didn't pass to me in that church. It passed to me at Mixed Magic Theater. Yes. And because I knew I, I could see my future. And and as a as a speaker in front of the, of the in front of people and, and and having an expectation of language command and having an expectation an expectation of being able to read well. Because in Sunday school you had to read aloud and things yes, like that. Yes, yes, so, yes. So 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 I, I, I believe in investing in you. But you got to, you know, in the black community especially, we love to pass over adults as if they don't need to be in the learning cycle. And we attract more young people to our theater now because of their mothers and fathers and, and adults in their lives. And they're the ones who come up and say, well, grandparents. and grandparents, yes. you know, they're the ones who say, you know, I want my turn. Yes. Because they know they're going to get a turn. Yes, okay. Right. And, 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 and they also know that because you're 15 and, and cute is not the ticket to, to the stage. <laughs> Work ethic, commitment. You know, I say all the time, you know, you know uh, 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 talent is fourth on the list of things you need to be in the theater. Mm -hmm. you, you, you first have to be focused. Mm -hmm. You have to be disciplined. You gotta know how to be on time and learn, and learn in your lives. You have to be committed. You have to be able to, be able to make a commitment, and last on the list is talent. You give me focus, discipline, and commitment, I'll get a performance. All right. And and uh, and young people, I'm afraid we know we're in such an instant society now that people don't know that you got to go into the trenches. That you know, oh, we get young singers who come in here. They used to sing with the radio. They karaoke every once in a while. They say, okay, here's a piano. Sing this note. <laughs> And it's like the head explodes. <laughs> it's like, well, what do you mean, sing, sing this no. Well, see, you've been singing with the radio and you sound good to yourself, you know. But now sing this no and the harmony. It's like, what? <laughs> but you say, don't quit. Yes. And don't get frustrated. Yes. Learn. Yes. You, you know, don't be afraid of Shakespeare. It's just words. Learn August Wilson. Read some history. You have to be so well informed to be in the theater, mm -hmm. uh, and, and that and that's why when, it, when young people do come through, when they leave here, we tell them you're going to be smarter, better at everything you do if you finish, if you can focus, discipline, and commit yourself. No matter what you do, we don't expect everybody to be an actor, but you can be better at everything you do. Yeah, beautiful. So and so that's Beautiful. that's that's the mixed magic mission and, and legacy and also with diversity. See, you have to practice diversity. You can't talk about diversity. So we have practice it or live it. You well, 
you, you got to demonstrate it. You know, you know, you see, you living it means, in some level, I think that you you accept it as a, as as an important part of life. Right. But when you practice it, you 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 know, you, you can talk good deeds and you can do good deeds. And and I think so much of corporate America, especially, talks diversity and they don't do diversity. Show me, show me the proof of it. Mm -hmm. And at Mixed Magic, we we work at showing the proof of it. So when people come in here, we 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 one of the first questions we ask people is, "Who are you? Where are you from?" Mm -hmm. And sometimes kids walk in and say, "Where are you from?" Cranston. It's like, no, no. Where are you from? Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's on the fourth or fifth time you ask the question, it's like. Liberia, okay, that's good. Okay, the Dominican Republic. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, my, my parents are from Georgia. Mm -hmm. say, okay, now we're now now now, we're getting, now we're getting a sense of because things inform you in your life, and you got to know where that's coming from. Yes, it, it didn't just fall out of the sky. That's right. And it, no, it doesn't mean that it's all helpful. Well, true. And it doesn't mean that it's all useful in this moment. But put it on the table, and then you, usually you're the one who says, "Well, I don't need this right now. It's, it's important. I'm glad I know it's there, but I don't need it right now." And, and if, if, then it allows for discussions and 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 open dialogue with people because nobody's there trying to hide something, right. you know. Or sometimes things will get revealed about you, and you go, "You know what?" I never thought that I was that type of person or that I actually believed something. But now I hear myself say it. And I don't feel that way. I really don't. I, you know, you know, and, and you know, you know, it's a question of, of like like racism, you know, are you a racist? And you know, and, and, and one of the best answers I ever heard a politician get was, you know, I have to deal with the racist thoughts I have. But I wake up every morning and I decide to do battle with them. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, I'm evaluating if I want or not. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, the theater says get up in the morning, recognize certain demons and strengths in your life, with demons especially, and decide to do battle with them. That's right. You know, there's not, you know, nobody's perfect. I mean, I mean, things have happened. You know, if you live an African American experience, you cannot help but sometimes go, you know what? <laughs> oh boy, you know. But what do you do with those feelings, those emotions? What do you do with them? And and when you when you when when you come into mixed magic theater, people come in and they say, you know what? Whatever thoughts, feelings I have, I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna try to find a way to express them. But if they're negative, I gotta do battle with them. Yes. Because and when you walk into mixed magic theater, it's a, it's almost like a sanctuary. It's safe. It's a safe environment. You're and, and we 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 often say we're not in the theater business. We're in the life saving business. <laughs> we 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 we, no. we we save lives. You know and. You know, and, and and people come in their self-esteem dragging on the ground. Yes. And you just say, you know what? Here, mm -hmm. pick it up. Yeah. We'll help you pick it up. Yeah. And and because when you come here, we want you to do well. Yes. And we're gonna work with you to do well. And it's not a question of are you better than this person or that person. Mm -hmm. You know, just understand that we want you to do well. Fifty percent. Did you know that if you're between the ages of 18 and 35, you're 10 times more likely to die from a car crash? Increase your odds by 50 percent. Just by wearing a seatbelt. It can make the difference between living or dying. I know this. We know this. Do you? So click it or tick it. In Rhode Island, it's the law. Seatbelts save lives.
sometimes people, people, you know, they come in sometimes and they've had a bad day at work, they hate their job, you know, and they, and they say, you know, they're walking and you can just see yeah. the tension and just, just like, oh man, I'm with you. But then they go back to work and they say, you know what, I don't know about you, I'm sorry, because you're going to go home and carry this with you. I don't. I'm going someplace where there's fun people, you know, <laughs> where some people are telling me I'm beautiful, and you know, because we talk about beauty. You gotta, you know, you can't, you, you know, at Mixed Magic, we talk about knowing your beauty. Know your beauty. Trust your beauty. Yes. Trust your genius. Yes. See, that's a, that's, a, that's a message our young people are not hearing enough. And that is true. Trust your genius. That's you know, right. know your genius mm -hmm. and know your weakness. And, uh, and, so I, I'm, I'm not sure that, uh, that these are, uh, <laughs> yeah, this is, this is, Those are the kind of answers I want. <laughs> yeah, but, but, uh, no, no, but, you know, I, I think that, um, it, it goes to the soul of the person. Yes, and, does. you know, people don't like to normally dabble there. That's right. But, um, you know, it's, it sounds like a mixed magic theater has created a family yes, of have. people who care about each other care in about the each world other. they live in. Absolutely. And and you know that is special in and of itself. That's a perspective that theater foundation corporations aspire to. They they really want to get there. Yes. And folks, I tell you. <laughs> Um, there is a, a, a bit of magic when you walk through the doors of, of mixed magic theater. Because um, the magic is in the mix. There's a, a spirit, a positive spirit. So now, now, I, I want you to, I want to move us along a little right. bit. They're currently housed in Lorraine Mills. In the Lorraine Mill complex here, we have a, we have a, a 90s theater, and uh, you know with a dressing rooms in the lobby and um, in some rehearsal hall. Yes. And uh, we, we we built it out of really nothing. You know, we had a we had a lot of help and a lot of people supported us. That's a blessing. It is a blessing. And uh, you know, we were you know, this is this is hard to do this. And and it's it's made more more difficult when you when when you're also trying to convince your, your public that Artists like doctors and lawyers deserve to be paid for their work, and they should be paid for their work. Uh, but, but like an art, like a doctor and a lawyer, have to go to law school and practice, and you know, before they can deserve to be paid, artists have to work before they deserve to be paid too. Yes. But at the end of it, uh, uh, they deserve to be paid, and we. We're not able to pay people what we what we like to, but we always are interested in doing that. We're also trying to be clear with people. You know, when it's t when you're ready to earn money, we will pay you. But but just because you walk in and did a play doesn't mean you're ready. Right. Uh, there, especially when people have been working, they worked their whole lives to to do this. But but we also have to get the audience, our audiences, and the public to understand that. Artists, uh, art is not free, mm -hmm. and and uh, uh, and the you know there, there's a uh, the term that gets bandied about in this state a lot, quality of life. Mm -hmm. You know the, the the quality of life that artists art and artists provides for people, for the community, mm -hmm. for the state. Almost never do they talk about the quality of life of the art of the artist, uh -huh. and and we're trying to get. The public to understand that you know, the equation I use very often is the Southerner before the Civil War wanted to protect their quality of life. Well, their quality of life was provided by a group of people who provided them with free labor. Mm -hmm. And very often, yes. artists are the free laborers. We labor. We try to present, you know, and uh, you know. But unlike the enslaved person at that time, we're penalized for our passion. Mm -hmm. You know, but so don't you just love what you're doing? Well, yes, I do. That doesn't mean that doesn't, mean that doesn't mean you don't want to eat. That doesn't mean I want to eat. It, 
That's, that doesn't mean I don't want to. I don't want a house. That doesn't mean I don't want to send my kids to college. You know. Yes, I love what I'm doing, and you know, and you, you hear this term like, you know, well, you would just do it for free, would you? Why? Yes, I would do it for free, but I wouldn't do it for you for free. And and uh, 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 so we have to learn to put a value on it, and you know, and, and we have to get out of this mentality of the starving artist, as if as if starving for your art ennobles you in some way. No, it doesn't. <laughs> starving for your art just makes you hungry. <laughs> exactly. You know, you can live for your art. You shouldn't starve for your art. Live for your art. And and when you live for your art, you give more. You you know you know the healthy body gives more. Yes. The tired, hungry body gives less. Yes. That's just that's just the laws of nature. That's true. So so uh, uh, you know and, and and also we have to be in in step with the way the culture is evolving. Mm -hmm. um, we we still live in a in a we have we have a, a an arts environment community in this country that's still very Eurocentric. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It still celebrates the Eurocentric idea of theater and class and race and all of those things. It's like you know something we're Americans. We're Americans now. And we have this rich, wonderful, troubling, terrible, beautiful, wonderful culture that we need to celebrate ourselves. We don't need to, uh, we do a Shakespeare production every year. But you know something? When I teach Shakespeare, which makes scholars crazy sometimes, it's like, I don't teach Shakespeare as the be-all and end-all of, of English language. It's like, hey, he was good. But you know something? If he's the best that ever was and will ever be, then you have nothing to aspire to. Mm -hmm. You know? It, 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 Shakespeare, if he were alive, I believe he would love hip-hop. Mm -hmm. He would love hip-hop. Because hip hop artists are doing what he did, creating language, creating ways of saying things, of expressing things, and, and creating, you know, he created 25,000 words. The, the next group of people who, who were going to create new language was going to come from two sectors. Technology was going to create new language, and hip hop was going to, and the arts was going to create new language, new words for the lexicon. So, so, um, but, but you can't, teach things as if the greatest thing has already been done. Right. What kind of teaching is that? You know, I'm, when I go into the classroom, I say, no, you are the one who must do the next great thing. Mm -hmm. and, and in the village of poets and playwrights and so on, Shakespeare's there. See, write a play, and you get a key to the village of playwrights. And when you open that door, all the great playwrights are there. And they open their heart and they welcome you. And they say, come on in, you got the key, so come on in. Let's see what you got. Yeah. Now, that, that, just because you're in the village doesn't mean that you 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 you're going to be celebrated and all of that, you know. <laughs> but it does mean that there are people in the village who want well for you, and then you know Shakespeare's going to tell you you got to rewrite it, mm -hmm. you know. But, uh, Baldwin and Lorraine Tansberry and, and 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 August Wilson and all the great playwrights, they're there too. They say no, you got to you got to keep working on it. Yes. And but you but you got to get yourself a key. The key of literature, the key of science, the key of the key of math. Get yourself a key. Go into the village. In that village, the world, the history of the world is there saying, okay, let's go to work. Let's let's see how great you are. Let's find your genius. Okay. And sometimes the people in the village say, you know what? Your genius is not there, it's over there. See, your genius is in the village of music. Or your village, your genius is in, 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 in the village of building. You know how to use your hands to make things happen. And the theater is a way of constantly saying to people, we're going to help you find your genius. Mm -hmm. and, and understand and appreciate the genius of others. But when you get into the theater, when you, you know, sometimes I'm, I'm watching other actors and I'm just so happy to be in this field. Because when you see an actor work at a certain level, you can just go, oh man. Or, you know, or, or when, when you see musicians listen to another musician and they, they just like, man, I'm so happy to be in this 
feel yes. when something like this can actually happen and I can feel like I'm a part of it. Yes. Or you read a novel, you read, you know, you know, Toni Morrison, you go, man, oh man, oh man. Man, oh man. Or Kurt Vonnegut Jr. and you just go, oh man. Mm. Oh man. And it's so you're so proud to be a part of something like that. And 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 that's our mission here at Mix Magic Theory, to say wow. to say to people. You know, you, you you have to participate. And there's no excuse not to participate. And we have to teach our culture. You don't separate art from food, clothing, health, fresh water. They're all the same thing. You know, feed a body and starve a mind, you get a net result zero. Well, you know, you know, we're going to put money into making sure that people have a house and clothes on their back and food. That's good. Okay, so you got this healthy body and an empty mind. No ambition, no drive, no, no, no sense of the future. You know, all you've done is, is help them to survive. And, and, and the theater is saying, don't just survive, excel. Achieve, go higher than that. Yes. And, and you know, don't settle for just food and water. That's right. But you know, but it's also there's a parable I use in one of my plays, uh, um, Kwanzaa song. If a man is hungry and there is no food, should he content himself to starve? No. He will find a way. Mm -hmm. And I, and we tell people in the theater. Find a way. Yeah. So we have we have single moms and, and people who, who who are living hand to mouth, you know, and, and you know, but sometimes they show up and they say, you know, I did, you know, I'm I'm finding a way. So they bring the kids with them. Sometimes, you know, we don't we don't discourage. I mean, we we, we, we last year we had the last two years we had five babies born. Yeah. You know, we got a nursery in the dressing room. You know, it's like you know, if it's a choice between I got to stay home with my baby or I, I can bring the baby with me. Well, bring, bring the baby with you, you know, and and, and and now you see these kids starting to grow up, and they walk in here and they have a sense of ownership. Yes. Of of this space, my granddaughter is one. She walks in here and she says, "This is, I don't know what I don't, I don't know what you do, but this is my theater. You know, my daddy is in charge. This is my granddaddy over there. That's my grandma over there. That's my that's my cousin. That's my good friend over there. You know, here's some other babies. You know, I rule them right now. You know, over there. yeah, I rule them right now. But they, you know, but they're gonna be the future army. You know, one day we're gonna take over this thing. That's right. But but you know. The loss of institutions in the, in the black community is, has been so devastating. Mm -hmm. Our, you know, the churches as institutions are fading away. I mean, look at how many things in Providence, Rhode Island, and Rhode Island alone have gone away in the last five years. Mm -hmm. This is John Hope. Now, it's not gone completely, but it's, it's diminished. John Hope, uh, ProCap, uh, uh, you know, uh, I can't even think of that. They tried to close the David Lopez Center, you know. Things that that used to be, you know, you know, the urban league. Things that used to be kind of the centers of the community, the, the foundations that held our community together, are almost all gone. Mm -hmm. Black rap is gone, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and we miss them terribly. Mm -hmm. we miss them terribly. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, we just, and we've got to find ways to, 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 to rebuild or build strong, solid institutions that our kids can walk into and say, if I don't have anywhere else to go in the world, I can go home. Yes. Because yes. there's a place for me there. Yes. And Mixed Magic Theater, you know, I'm looking forward to the day when my granddaughter walks in with her friends and says, I grew up here. Yes. And can say so proudly. And can say so proudly. And, and, uh, and uh, you know, I'm headed back to Princeton. Or, or to, uh, or my, or, or my dad went to school here. Yeah, well, I'm going to do, I'm going to Stanford. Well, I'm going to the University of Michigan. That's where I'm going right now. But I take with me yes. a piece of the of, of my world, yes. and 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 there's an expectation that once I gain something, there's a line in one of the Maya Angelou poems that uh, our grandmothers, you know, that says, "When you get, give." When you learn, teach. Yes. yes. And uh, and 
No. Yes. It was a kind of, you know, I, 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 I could sit here for the rest of the evening and enjoy um, the information that you've been imparting. But I got to ask you, what's Mixed Magic Theater up to for the next six months? Well, um, we're uh, we're doing an, um, we're doing uh, on the, uh, August 29th. We're doing our seventh annual Greatness of Gospel concert uh, at, here at five at outdoors at 560 yeah. Middle Spring Avenue. We're looking forward to it. We got our music director is, is my my son's wife Kim. It's Wiley. Oh. She's terrific. She's just just an amazing young woman. Excellent. And uh, and then uh, and then in September we have a series of things that we're we're, we're one ups we call them one single events that we're working. One of them will be the 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 first part of something called the Blackstone River Song, uh, a four year project that we're working with the City of Kentucky and Slater Mill to tell the story of the Blackstone River. Oh, which excellent. is a fascinating story from the King Philip's Wars that that shaped this country in ways that we that we most people don't understand uh -huh. to the, the to the Slater Mill and the cotton industry and the Industrial Revolution how it it shaped this country. I think the Blackstone River is the most significant body of water in this country. Wow. Uh, and then uh, and then in uh, October uh, we're opening a new play by. Uh, Playwright Kevin Broccoli called the Diner and Mrs. Stone, uh, father drama, father son, uh, father daughter drama, very good show, young playwright. My son is directing, and then um, we'll, uh, in the, in the fall we'll be doing really three projects. One of them is a new look at the John Brown story. Okay. Uh, you know where we're exploring finding John Brown. You know John Brown and, and the events of Harper's Ferry. Oh, so oh, John Brown from the Brownfield. Yeah, from no, 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 no. John Brown, the 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 the, the radical who raided Harper's Ferry oh. that kicked off the Civil War. Okay, okay. Uh, I mean, okay. And that's a that's a story that is a fascinating story. It's a great history. It's a time in history of coming out now that you know that there is. A, and when is that? Well, we expect Sorry. to do the first part of it, um, the the first reading of it. In November, okay, and then and then and, uh, and at the beginning of next year, we'll 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 have developed our first part of of the presentation. It's shape, okay. but trying to just trying to tell that story, you know, you know, from a black perspective too, you know, from a, from an American history perspective, but from 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 a black perspective, you know, like John Brown was a radical dude, you know, but he was he was crazy, but. He said slavery is wrong, and the only way we're going to end it is a, with a fight. And we're either going to fight on Tuesday or we're going to fight on Wednesday. That's fight on Tuesday. Because you know, let's kick it off. Let's get this thing going. And and the result was the Civil War. Yeah. Uh, uh, even though the Civil War wasn't as much about slavery as we think it is, it it but but it was a key element that that. That it was that that was above the 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 economic interests of the North and the South. Yeah, right. It was a moral imperative that had to be dealt with. Yes. And 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 John Brown was the most unlikely person to 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 uh, uh, be at the forefront of that moral imperative. Mm. But uh, he and so that's a project that we're working on. In mixed magic, we look at a concept like that, a project idea like that, and we say we're going to invest time and develop. And it may take us three years to do it, but we have a we have a long term interest in in, in, in telling the story. Now, what uh, I guess another question I have for you: Everybody needs something and someone and some people. Uh, what is it? What's on your top of the, What's on the top of your wish list, uh, Ricardo, for mixed magic there? Well, economic stability mm -hmm. w w is very key to us right now. Okay. I mean, it, it's it's in a bad economy, in a state with a bad economy, the toll it takes to keep a, an organization going is is is, is, is awful sometimes. And and we stay in here, but we need to stabilize ourselves economically. Okay. That, that that's important. Yes. But also, um, we need we need 
more participation from the community. Oh, okay. We we need we need people of all ages and and, and, and incomes and, mm -hmm. and education to to come to mixed magic and see where there's a place for them to participate. Okay, and should they be interested, where should they call, who should they call? Well, they, they, the first thing they should do is visit the website. Okay. Yeah, uh, it's uh, www.mmtri.com. Um, there, there's information about the company there. Okay. They can, they can, there's ways they can email us, Come see a play. Yes. That's always important. Come see a play. There's and on a, the website, there's a calendar. There, there's a calendar of events. There's okay. how you can participate. Uh, the, we have uh, we have a series of acting classes that are coming up. Adult, okay. intermediate, and an advanced class that are coming up. I mean, it's, and a young and a young class too. We're also doing a, a young people's project, kind of a, a different kind of uh, after school project in which uh, young people will take a classic text and break it down and rebuild it as a play in their own voice. Okay. And similar to what we did with Moby Dick and Frankenstein and Don Quixote. So we'll, we'll I'll see what my, my group is. The, you know, they have to be invested. They have to be, you have to have a recommendation from a teacher okay. in order to be in the program. Uh -huh. uh, uh, but Do you but, charge for the classes? Uh, what our goal is to, there's a fee for the class, but once we have our participants, we try to go to corporate interests and say, we have a kid who wants to be in this program, will you pay the tuition to be here? Because many kids just can't afford it. Okay. And, and, and we, we try not to pass that cost on to the kids. Mm -hmm. But once, but, but, but you see, the, the, we try not to go out and raise that money and then get the kid. We try to get the kid and then and say, okay, this company paid for you to be here. Mm -hmm. You know, so so you know, this teacher wrote a letter on your behalf. This is not a free ride for you. Okay. You know, uh, and, and 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 there's an expectation that you have to have of yourself first, but there's an expectation that other people have of you yes. too. Somebody invested in you know, like in my Angelou says in, in on the post of the morning. You know, you know. Uh, there are things in this world that that your ancestors and other people have paid for you. It was paid in advance. Right. Now your job is to take advantage of it. Mm -hmm. Opportunity is not given. Opportunity is taken. Yes. And like power, nobody gives anybody power. Power is taken because you 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 understand it and you say, okay, I will. You know, and you don't you know, see we we misunderstand power sometimes as you know something that's violent and volatile. When, it, when a lot of it is power, is self-realization. It's of knowing I choose to do this or I choose not to do this. Okay. You know, yeah. I mean, you know, I don't. I try to avoid buying Koch Brothers products. That's my power to say I will not invest in. It's hard to. They, they, they're, they're everywhere. <laughs> yeah. but, but, but you see that it, it's you know I mean there's. there's so understanding power uh, and, 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 and how to use it and understanding that nobody is powerless unless they render themselves powerless. Right. And part of what we do in my, my after school program is, is to say, I'm, we're trying to invest you with the power of interpretation. Mm -hmm. You know, we're gonna take some classic literature and you gotta read the book. So, I mean, there's a couple of things that we're looking at. One of them is the Hunchback of Notre Dame because it gives us a chance to deal with with bullying and and, and abuse of power mm -hmm. and and love. It's a it's a great love story. Mm -hmm. It's a great love story and history and you know, all of those things written by a black man, you know, in France. So you know, so you know, so you know, so you get a you get a world view. Yes. So those are the kind of projects that, that I like to do with young people. Yes. And. Yes. Uh, I don't, I don't, I don't run a babysitting program. Nope. You know, you know, if, if you're in my program, you gotta work, baby. You gotta, you gotta come to work. <laughs> and bring your lunch bucket. You know. Yeah, exactly. Because, because my promise to you, if you finish, you'll be better at everything you do. Oh, that is wonderful. That is so wonderful, Ricardo. Ricardo, I just want to thank you so much for <laughs> affording us this time.
You have, you have certainly shared a wealth of information with us. And folks, you know, go to the website, please check out Mixed Magic Theater and what they're up to for the, for the next six months. You know, if you enjoy what you heard here today, then I'm sure you will pick up the phone and call Ricardo or his staff and, and see how you can get immersed in the wonderful activities that Mixed Magic Theater has, uh, is crafting. So, And the premises is a beautiful, beautiful real estate. Yeah. Um, you know, and the artwork and the foyer is fabulous and, and there's a warmth here. And trust me, don't believe me? Come check out the plays, check out the people, and enjoy a piece of history for the Providence, no, Pawtucket. We're in Pawtucket, but we serve Rhode Island. We serve Rhode Island, Rhode Island community. Yes, we do. So, Ricardo, thank you so much. It's my pleasure. We so enjoyed having you and enjoy being listening here. to you and, yeah, you know, Sopping up your information <laughs> and wonderful philosophy. You right. and Bernadette have done a fabulous well, job. Well, we couldn't have done it without Bernadette. Nothing could have happened without Bernadette. And, uh, you know, uh, I mean, this community owes my wife a debt. Let me change that. She has served this community in ways that, that not everybody understands. Mm -hmm. She has made sacrifices. And, uh, you know, and I, uh, I just... Uh, I'm, 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 I'm proud of her, uh, you know, but, you know, we need to create more Bernadettes. Yes. And, you know, who are willing to, to make sacrifices. And, but also, you know, we we need to find ways to reward those people for what they've done. Sure. And uh, sure. uh, so sure. some of it is financial, but some of it is just, you know, you know, let's go out and let's go to college. Yes. You know, let's graduate from college. You pay me back, you know, you know, you know, you know. Yes. Yeah, one of the things that you learn, you know, I did as a, as a young man was the person, you don't always have to pay back the person you borrow from, but you got to pay back somebody. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and, and we, we're, we're always, we stay in it a lot because some of the people come back and say, you know, I, I graduated and, uh, and uh, I worked down at a community center yes. and that's how I give back. Yes. And, or or I started a, a foundation, you know, to help to help girls go to college. Yes. That's how I that's how I paid back and, and and you and your wife were the ones who inspired me to be a, to be a, a servant in my community. Mm -hmm. And and also understand that you know, we have to, you know, we, we have to get our kids to stop thinking that their world is limited to two blocks in Providence or Pawtucket or Moonside. That's true. That the world is there for them and you, and, and, and stop making excuses. Go see the world. Not everybody thinks the way the people in your community think. You got to see the world yeah. yourself yeah. and you got to shake some hands and, and, and walk some miles to understand the, you know, and, uh, and, uh, and, don't, and don't let money be the object. You know, find a way. Right. right. Find a way. Well, thank you. Thank Thanks you. again, Ricardo. And thank you folks for watching.